All right, guys, so uh, welcome back to our backyard bushcraft series. I got Bobby here today. Sammy's doing the uh, the recording. Uh, this past weekend, I was up the Dave Canterbury's Pathfinder School doing a primitive trapping class, and we were making all these traps, like a, a crayfish trap, uh, doing some weaving. Mine's ugly, but it would work. <laughs> um, I'll show how to make one of those in a later video. Uh, this is a... Uh, the Egyptians made this 8,000 years ago, one of, like this, um, for catching mice and rats. Thanks, rooster. Um, and it's just a primitive trap. And the way it works is basically there's a, a loop here, back here, behind this. So it goes like, let me... And this is a little more advanced because you have to do a lot of fire bending and things like that. So I'm not going to really do one of these in these videos. And then you would have a loop here, but a mouse ate my loop. And uh, basically, once they chew the bait off that loop, this thing just snaps down and takes them out. And it, it's it's pretty strong. Uh, it wore out a little bit because something set it off. So I'm going to have to reset it. But it's things like that. We were talking about uh, live cage traps in another video. Um, manufactured live cage traps and that's the easiest just go buy a few live traps and set them out and you have traps but today we're gonna build um, based on I was watching one of my favorite channels survival Lily uh, she was building a kind of a live trap cage trap out of bamboo I don't have any bamboo around here um, and she I, I loved her cage because it's solid she she wrapped her cord in and out in and out in and out um, I don't have time for that uh, basically, I want something that's heavy, and I want to make this an easy setup and an easy disassemble because I actually want to be able to disassemble it to take it out to the site where I'm going to be using it because uh, I'm not always going to be out there making the thing. It could take some time to make this stuff. So I'm going to harvest my materials, and I'm going to create a simple, simpler version like I, I'd learned this weekend um, that's easy to put together and that I can tear it down, take it out to the site where I'm going to set it and build it back up fairly rapidly. So um, I want to try to do one of the ones that Lily did because I've seen that done a lot of times. I really want to try that. But for the sake of time, uh, Bobby and I are going to build a simpler one. And we're only going to use three pieces of cordage. We're not going to weave it in and out. Um, it's a friction fit. And uh, then we're going to make the trigger for it. Uh, but what we have over here, uh, when I was up to Pathfinder School, we collected a lot of things like red bud it typically grows pretty straight when you cut one off like seven will grow in its place uh, but this is about five foot tall and you're going to collect about 20 of these i would say that's that's probably a good amount that's probably more than what you need because uh, basically you need 36 to 39 pieces to make it work so you can find little saplings like this grown all over the place if you see them in bunches like red bud or anything like that in bunches and they're fairly straight not perfectly straight they have thorns on them just knock them off with your knife or your saw before you cut it down and then just cut the top off cut the bottom off and you have a piece now we're going to cut these down to sizes uh, generally we're looking for uh, 24 inch 18 inch 14 inch and you know smaller progressively from there I even have some pieces that are probably about maybe 10 inches things like that for the top um, so we're going to sit here and for all the scouts out there the cup scouts or boy scouts out there uh, you can either use a regular pruning saw to do this or for your bushcrafters, your Baco or your Silky. Um, or you can use your SAK. Um, this one's the Ranger, Ranger 79 grip. Bobby has the Forester. Sammy has the Hunter HD. Um, all of which have this uh, nice sharp saw on it. And that's good enough to do what we're doing. But before Sammy stops the video while we cut all this up, step over here, buddy. If good. Um, I'm just going to show you real quick how I would go about cutting these long pieces like this in a safe way. So I just take it like this. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to cut on this side of my leg. I'm never going to cut in here. What I'm going to do is put it in my legs, and this is called a plumber's vise. And I'm just going to kneel down like this so it's pressed up against my leg here. And then I can just take this saw and just gently cut through it, and it's going to hold it in place for me so it's not, it's not going all over the place while I'm trying to cut it. I see a lot of, a lot of folks trying to cut long lengths. And they're basically doing one of these, and it's wiggling all over the place, and they end up cutting their fingers and stuff. So if you just use that plumber's vise, if you're left-handed, you're going to do it. You're going to do it on the other side, like this. Wait a minute, like this. 
like Bobby would do it like this, right? Like that, because he's left-handed. Where I'd do it over on this side, like that. So I might just bend my knee a little bit like that, clench down on it, and then I can cut right there, all right? So we're gonna get all these cut down the length and then we'll come back to you and show you how to tie this trap together. So um, the next thing you're gonna need, we cut about 40 sticks down. They range in sizes. They go from about two feet down to, you know, about 20 to 18 inches down to, you know, 14 to 16 inches. Um, you can cut them exact lengths if you want to, like nine of each size. You're looking for about 36 sticks, somewhere around there. And uh, you may have to add a few extra when you get to the top. And then you might have to dress up the sides if you want it to look real pretty or whatever. I'm looking for functional. Um, the next thing you're going to do is take take a stick that's... We don't want our trap to sit more than 45 degrees on an angle. Um, because if it's sitting too high, when they trip it, it might have time to get out before it falls down. So we de generally want that trap to be under 45 degrees on a tilt. So this is going to put it about 45, somewhere around there. But what I've done is I've taken a stick here. It's about the size of my thumb. And that's what most of these are, about the size of your thumb. Um, and I cut about a third of the way down through on this side here. Then I flipped it over. So if you see here, I cut about a third of the way down on this side, right? On the small end, right here. Then I flipped it over, went up about, oh, about the length of my thumb to knuckle. And I cut it down about a third of the way through too. So one here and one down here, all right? That way I could just take it like this and snap it. And I created a barber chair cut. This is our trigger. So what I did was I just gently whittled the sides down. I straightened it out nice and even. So it's going to sit on here like this. It's going to go under our trap. And we're going to tie a piece of line around this. So when they trip on it, and I'll show you how to do that. When they trip on it, it's going to pull out and make the trap fall. This is just going to sit on the ground. So we don't want this dug into the ground. We just want it sitting on the ground, basically. All right. So that's our trigger. We got that part done. Got all of our sticks done. Then I'm going to use tarred bank line, Mariner's bank line. It binds on itself really well. You can use paracord if you want. This is generally cheaper. Uh, it binds better. Um, and like I said, it's tarred. Um, so once you have that, what you want to do is kind of like... We goofed it up the first time, didn't we, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> so you have your two sticks like this, all right? And what you're gonna do is put a stick across there and measure and make sure you have a little bit of overlap. It doesn't have to be quite that much. And then what you're gonna do is tie a piece of your cordage to this end. You can use whatever lash you want. Um, you can use a timber hitch with a clove hitch to tie it off, a stop knot. Um, I did a granny knot up here and down here. I'm just doing a couple half hitches. Um, I tried to half hitch is like just basically like this kind of wrap it around your thumb so you get a loop like that and then put it around the end Whoop. it's more like that so. so you can do a couple half hitches on the end there to get that part of it done just like that and then what you got is you have this x in the middle right and that's the center Wish it was a little more even than that, but it's not. And then what you do is just give it a twist, and that brings the center together, okay? Now, if we move these sticks, well, let's step out here. What you do is just lay it down. We'll start with your longest sticks, and all you're gonna do, and like I said, I've said before, you can trim up your cordage, tie stop knots, whatever you need to do. I didn't do a, you know, that extra half hitch in there. You just want it lashed down as tight as you can get it. So you have this. It's tangled up pretty good. And then basically, you're just going to take your sticks and you're going to start them like this. And bring it straight down, right? Then get your, your next one and get it up under there. And bring it straight down. Like I said, mine's not going to be real pretty because I didn't really measure anything. Like that. And then you're going to go to your next level. Like this. Put one in there. And take your next one. Try to keep the sizes as even as you can get them. 
you don't want to get too much gaps in between these sticks because then whatever you're catching can get out and also a predator can generally get in you would want this to be bigger than this I, I just made it small just for the sake of time so you just keep going back and forth like this kind of building almost like building a Lincoln log house right mm -hmm. And you're just going to keep on going until you get to the top and i'll show you what you do when you get up to the top of it but you keep wanting to stretch these out get them as tight as you possibly can that way you have a nice sturdy heavy tight trap when you're done so sammy's going to stop the video and bobby's going to continue doing this so we can get it done okay so now we're just crisscrossing bobby's going to grab the middle in the middle pull it towards you get it over that knot go ahead keep pulling get it nice and tight okay right there is good now get your next one so notice we're getting progressively shorter we're not going to get as many sticks in here as we wanted simply because uh, i didn't make the string long enough but small grouse or something you could catch with this easily i'll start chasing nope nope do a longer one we're gonna get up here. Use those ones right here. These ones right here. Okay. That's called red bud. See how it's kind of red? It's got a reddish color to it. Yeah. And we're gonna keep these back. And we're gonna do that. Grab another one. There you go. Same way. Nice and gentle because you don't want to tear it apart while you're doing it. And we're just gonna spread that back. Make sure that string is landing in the right spot yep shorter one use a shorter one on that okay right there beside your hand there's two shorter ones that one might be a bit thick but that's all right and the thing is about these folks is it's practice you know like survival lily she did hers with bamboo and wove the cordage in and out and it was beautiful and it, it looked all nice and even and is gorgeous um and we're not there <laughs> hold on a second buddy uh we're not there because we're just practicing teaching the kids how to do this and we need to it's something you need to do kind of over and over and over again let's use a skinnier one okay um it's something you need to do over and over and over again until you just get it right and you'll you'll know when you're getting it right it'll start to come together and you'll be like wow that first one looked horrible now nope, we're going to go that way oh this way okay we'll be like the first one looked horrible and if something tony daniel up at the pathfinder school said to us the other day was you this is probably going to be the worst looking one you've ever create you'll ever create because you get better and better and better at it as you go. So if you're not practicing it, then it's just always going to look horrible every time you do it. But if you practice it on a regular basis, that could even mean just tear down the one you got and rebuild it. Cut things a little more evenly. This way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, practice with what you already got. But Bobby can tell right now it's getting really tight. It's getting harder to do, isn't it? So grab another one. Hey, let's grab one of these. Uh... Wait, no, this one. Hang on. That work. So as you're going, I'm glad she let the dog out while we were doing this. As you're going, um, this is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter to put in there. And you just keep adjusting everything, and getting it to where you want it. But, you know... The reason I, I did this backyard bushcraft series is because a lot of people are waiting until they're out in the woods and they need to do something to do this stuff. And I'm sorry, but you're going to get yourselves into trouble if you really need it because it's, it's, if you've never done it before, if you're waiting until you're out there, then you're probably, it's probably going to fail on you. And that's the worst thing in the world to burn all those calories and be doing all this stuff and have it fail on you. So if you need it now, you need to go out there and do it now to, I don't know, trap game, small game or whatever it may be. 
and start with manufactured live traps. Most of the time your primitive traps are going to be illegal where you're at, depending on what state you're in anyway. But start with manufactured live traps and work your way into practicing. Sam, can you hand me that one right there, please? And then practice these ones in your backyard. Because generally, legally, in most places in the United States, you're not going to be allowed to use like those trigger traps, like I showed you, um, that are primitive because it's typically illegal to use them. But if you were in a survival situation, you're a hiker or whatever it may be, uh, you'll find that these, uh, these types of traps here are really great because you have, you're catching something live, it's not gonna die on you, and this should be shorter just so you know, we can trim these off later on. Um, it's not gonna die on you before you check your traps, or it's not gonna rot in the heat. You're gonna have live animals in this stuff. So let's take a saw, cut this down real quick. Ah. You grunting like an old man, pal. What was that? <laughs> I think there's more chickens than the last time. Yeah. So basically, when you get to the top of your trap, and Survival Lily, if you're watching this, you can make this prettier than me. I know you can. Because uh, I'm not I'm not all that well versed in yeah. doing these things. The reason I like this trap in particular is because I'm using three pieces of cordage. And that's it. Um, three short pieces of cordage. And I don't have to take the time to do all the weaving. Right? At this point, I'm just looking for a functional trap that's going to hold up and that's going to be heavy enough to stay down where an animal is not going to be able to lift it up. And I want it to be easy, easy to manufacture. If I'm spending a couple hours tying off cordage, then it's going to be kind of like a really daunting task. But at this stage here, I'm going to just go through, straighten things up. And if I wanted to, like I said, if you want to make it pretty, you can go through and trim these all up and everything. But at this stage, I have a functional trap. Now, I'd want this to be taller, but for if it was a, a rabbit or something like that, right, I could easily use this now the next part we take actually let's do that in another segment soon all right so when you do this you're going to tie the string around the bottom part of the trigger and have the cut facing in and tie it off in the back and have it just resting here and then if you have uh critters around you're just going to throw those under there and see she doesn't know to come around the front right uh oh i'm going to catch it so Oh. This trap was bigger. You could see the trigger doesn't take much. What I happens is, that. what happens is, they trip themselves up on this piece of string here, basically. Oh my god! So, you want your trigger, this side to be low, yes. and this this longer part to be high, and then you just have it set up like this. And if the dummies would eat from the other side, <laughs> right? You basically have all this stuff underneath here. And what they do is they get themselves trapped up. Now, generally, I don't have the back trimmed. I want that part to be on the ground where it's tied off. I want it to be resting on the ground. Um, if I trim that up, it rests right on the ground. Then smaller like uh, grouse or even, you know, squirrels, things like that. They would come in here. They trip themselves up on this line. And this trap comes down on top of them and catches them. But these chickens are like... They're the dumb. smaller chicken wants to eat from behind. <laughs> they're dumb, but they're, they're not smart. Dumb. They're not dumb. It's like, it's, it's weird. What it is, is this trap's not big enough. We'd want this to be about two, three times bigger. So it's a big cage that comes down on top of it. So if, now if you can imagine oh my God. If, how much wider it needs to be. And this is why you need to test in your backyard. How much wider does it need to be to work? Right? It needs to be about this much wider. Oh my God. Like this. Push it down. Push it down. Oh, she's going to. Oh, yeah. 
but then we just let her go. See, now through testing, this is what I'm getting across to you guys in the scouts and everything. Through testing, we find out how stable it is, how much bigger it needs to be. We figure out which trigger systems are working for us. I think Sammy's surprised it even works. Oh my God, yeah. But I want this to be about this big, about probably two or three feet long, so right? I'm eat it. And I want it to be square. I don't want it to be a rectangle like this. This is a sloppy trap. But this is chicken? a project I'm working on with the kids. Point it up here, Sam. Okay. This is a project I'm working on with the kids just to show them how these things function. But if I took the time, which we didn't take the time, we'd make it about three feet by three feet. And we'd make it probably roughly about two and a half to three feet tall. So it's going to be pretty big, right? So now you're going to use a little more cordage to make your X pattern, right? You're going to need more sticks. And this is where you can see all these different conglomerated sizes and everything. That's why it's important to find these pieces, red bud and things like that, that are about this, the width of your thumb, right? You want them to be kind of small, about the width of your thumb. And cut them into progressional pieces. Like I might cut 12 that are 36 inches long, then I might cut 12 more that are 30 inches long, then 12 more that are 28 inches long, then 12 more that are 26 inches long, and keep progressively getting smaller and smaller so I can have a nice big trap. So I might have, by the time I'm done, 40 pieces on here, which I don't have on there, um, about 36 to 40 pieces or 45 pieces to make a nice big trap. But using this X pattern, allows me to just be able to come in, tear this down, tear it apart, put it into a roll, throw it up over my shoulder, take it out in the woods, and then sit down and set it up, right? But only if they're trim. I mean, you see these pieces are not very trim. They're not trimmed down, they're not even. It makes, it affects our trigger system, right? It caught the brown chicken. It caught the brown chicken. Yeah, it comes um, back. And if I would have left it alone, if she was a pheasant in the woods, and I went and lifted it up, she would have got herself nestled under there and laid down. Probably. And then somebody's going to say, well, how would I eat that animal if it's alive in that trap? Well, that's where your 22 pistol comes in. That's just the way it is. This is a live trap. This is not meant for killing. So if you're trapping animals out in the wild to eat, well, you better have something to dispatch that animal with. And typically it's going to be a club or a pistol. So it's just, this is a project I was working on with the kids just to kind of show them how these things function. Next time we do it, we're going to work on getting everything to size, getting everything perfectly straight, right sizes, all those things. But, it, you know, I've I watched people do these beautiful projects like Survival Lily did. And I'm thinking, well, if you just took the time at home and just practice a little bit, you can do those things too. But start with basics like this and work your way up to those things. Don't try to make that Mona Lisa of a trap right out the gate like she she's good at. Um, start with the generic stuff like I just did. And then you can say, okay, it needs to be this wider. It needs to be this much more cordage. I need my sticks to all be the same length, that kind of thing, um, to make this work out. But that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Well, even the imperfect one. <laughs> it's about the right size for her, huh? <laughs> Let's let her out of there. And that's that, folks. Uh, like I said, try to, um, obviously, try to make your traps bigger. Uh, take more time with it. Don't rush it like we did. Um, this is just a general here, Hey kids, here's a project. Here's how you make a trap and a trigger system type thing because we got all these chickens running around that aren't even our chickens um, But you guys give it a shot and please record a video and respond to this one and show me how you do it uh, Once again, thanks to survival Lily for all the great content and the great stuff that she does and uh, Guys make sure to go to the link in the description and go subscribe to her channel and check out the really awesome trap that she made. All right. Take care Thank <laughs> you.